Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to this lecture of uh, the course data communication. And we are talking about the module two. And uh, this is our lecture four. And uh, in this lecture, we are going to talk about digital to analog conversion techniques. Digital to analog conversion. Right. In this topic, we are going to discuss three techniques. So these techniques are also known as digital modulation techniques. So we are going to discuss first with amplitude shift gain. then frequency shifting and finally phase shifting phase shifting fine and we are going to understand the performance of these uh, methods, techniques, in terms of the bandwidth and how they are implemented. So the concept of the baud rate, that is the signal rate and the data rate will be continued here. So with this definition that signal element or the signal rate or the baud rate or the symbol rate is equal to the bit rate divided by the factor R, which gives the ratio between the data element and the signal element. Okay, so these three techniques are what we are going to discuss in this lecture. So let's start with the first technique. It's called amplitude shift gain. Okay, so in this technique, we are having our data signals, right? So let us take the data signal first. And the modulation, I mean, this uh, line coding scheme we are using is uh, a simple uh, uh, unipolar kind of signal. So if I assume that my Data consists of one, zero, one, one, right? So I'm assuming that this is my data. And if I use a unipolar signal, it is given with some plus V volts. Zero is with the zero volts. Again, we have one. And again, there is a one. Right, so I'm just putting a simple small dot here to tell that there are two ones, just for convenience. And in the ASK, wherever I see a positive voltage, I'm going to use a simple sine wave of some frequency to represent that digital signal. So I don't have voltage here, so it will be just a zero volts. So again, now here I am having one, so I'll be using a waveform. Again, I'm having a one, so my waveform will continue. Right, so this is called as amplitude shift. Amplitude shift key. So it is similar like the amplitude modulation. So if there is the voltage, then a sine wave will be generated. And the absence of voltage, so there will be no sine wave that is there. Now, if we look at the bandwidth of the signal, the baseband signal is modulated, means it has been shifted to the carrier frequency. 
it's the frequency of the carrier signal. So the bandwidth, if I take, right? So if I, if I drive a spectrum, we can observe that it is centered at some frequency f. And the bandwidth of the signal, so if I take this bandwidth, we can write it as 1 plus d into the signal element. So how many signal, how many symbols are there? So here we are having one symbol and D is called as a modulation index. Either it is a zero or one. So bandwidth is going to be varying centered around the carrier. Fine. Now if we look at how this is being implemented. So the, the implementation is very simple. So we will use a circuit which will multiply these two signals. See, I'll be having this input here, which is a square waveform. Right, I'm just taking one and zero here. And the another input to this is a simple oscillator. So that will be generating a sine wave, right? With certain frequency Fc, right? So the output of this, so here I'm having plus V volts. So whenever I'm having a plus V volts, the output will be a sine wave. And when there is zero, zero volts, I'll not be having any signal. Right, so it's a very simple technique to, uh, the implementation is uh, very simple in this, uh, uh, you know, ASK modulation, right. So we are going to have a oscillator that will be oscillating at some frequency and this is called as carrier frequency, okay. So we are, the oscillator is generating a sine wave and that is called as a carrier signal. And the frequency it is uh, generating this signal is called carrier frequency. And we multiply this sine wave with my given input. So this is my V. Hope you get the idea, right? So whenever I'm having plus V volts, here I'm generating this voltage will be plus, this signal will be plus V sine of two pi Fc into T. Whereas here, since it is zero, I'll be having a zero. So another one if appears, again, I will be having uh, plus V sine two pi Fc into T, right? So the implementation of this is also very, very easy. But the ASK suffers from the drawback of the effect of the noise. Since the noise affects the magnitude, the additive noise especially, it affects the magnitude, the large amount of noise might create a good amount of error into the signal, right? So other kind of, the second type of technique is called as frequency shifting technique. Frequency shift keying. It is something like the frequency modulation. Right? So what actually happens? So let's take that example. So we are having a signal or my data that is one, zero, one. Right? So I'm having the data as one, zero, and one. And now one bit is represented using one carrier frequency. So here I'm going to use four cycles. Okay, some frequency F1 is used. Whereas zero is represented using a, a different frequency. Again, I see a one, so I'll be having one frequency. Right, so this should come like this. 
Fine. So what is happening? One is using the data one or bit one is using one carrier frequency. Let's call this as the F1. Whereas here I'm using a second carrier frequency. So if it drives spectrum, right? So we observe that there are two carrier frequencies, F1 and F2. Okay. And they have some spectrum. Right? So these two frequencies are separated by a value. Let's call this as delta F. Okay. So the frequencies now, they are separated by a value uh, 2DF. So let's call this as 2DF. Right? So bandwidth of this signal we have here bandwidth here is 1 plus D into S. And again, I'm having here as 1 plus D into S. Right? So the total bandwidth that we can observe, right? The total bandwidth that we can observe here okay so that i can write it as 1 plus t into s plus twice of this frequency deviation the deviation between the two frequencies so that's how we can define the bandwidth of the frequency shift because of the two frequencies that we use so how do we implement this, right? So if I look at the implement part, we have two kinds of implementation. One, use two ASK. It is similar like that. Right? So you use two ASK and combine them. So this kind of implementation is called as coherent FSD, right? So when I... Uh, Yeah, so one, one kind of implementation is you take two SK and join them. So that kind of uh, implementation, so if you implement in that way, sorry, it's not coherent, it's called as a non coherent FSK technique. The other one is use what is called as VCO, or this is known as voltage controlled oscillator. Okay. So this is a simple circuit. Uh, uh, if you just recall the concept of the, uh, what is called as a field effect system, it's a very good device that we can use it uh, as a voltage controlled oscillator. So what we do here is, so based upon my input, okay, so if these are my inputs, okay, we design this circuit to generate two carrier frequencies like this, another one which is something like this, right? So a simple method is using the VCO. So if I, if we implement FSK using the voltage controlled oscillator, we call them as coherent, FSK, right? Okay, so what is happening here is the VCO is generating an oscillations. Given its input, this is my input, it will generate uh, two different frequencies because we are having two uh, symbols or the uh, data up there, right? So if this kind of implementation is called as uh, the coherent FSK techniques, right? So we do have techniques which is called as multi-level FSK. So whereas in the previous uh, example, we can call this as binary FSK, okay? So this is another technique we have, it's called uh, multi-level FSK, 
In binary FSK, which we discussed just now, is we are having uh, two symbols for one bit, right? So one symbol, sorry, one symbol for one. So in multi-level FSK, what is going to happen is we will consider more than one bits, like for 0, 0, I may have, I may have 1, 1. So for 0, 0, I am going to use one frequency. And for 1, 1, I am going to use another frequency. Similarly, for 1, 0, there will be a different frequency. So I am having F1, F2, F3. And for 0, 0, I am having four frequencies. So we can use multiple frequencies also. Of course, the bandwidth requirement is increased because of the multiple frequency components. And the effect of noise is less when compared to the ASK method because here the information is represented in the frequency, not in the mapping. But the difficulty is with the implementation and maintaining the phase of the signal. So that will be a challenge in this case, which uh, leads to us to understand phase shifting. Okay, so in this, the idea is very simple. Okay, so if this is my data, okay, this is the data that we are having. Instead of using a, a unipolar scheme, let us use a bipolar scheme. Right, and my carrier frequency will be a simple sine wave. So let me take this sine wave. Okay, pardon me for not drawing the diagrams to the scale. Now, if I multiply these two signals, we can see that I'm going to get one signal like this. Okay. And another signal where I see a negative, I will, uh, I observe that there is a phase change. So instead of starting at the zeroth degree, I will see a phase change. So whenever there is change of uh, the data, so we are going to see that there is a change in the phase. Right. So since I'm using one uh, bit, with one signal element. So we call this as BPS scaling. Again, the idea is very simple as like the ASK. The only difference that we have when we compare to the ASK is the input signal here is a NAG, is a bipolar signal. So here in this case, I'm using a NARZ, where my voltage will be plus volts and minus V volts. And the other input to this multiplier is an oscillator, right? Which will generating a, a, a constant uh, frequency signal. That will give me an output with two signals, something like this. One with zero degree and one with uh, 180 degrees. Right, so this is called as binary phase shift gain, binary phase shift gain, or what is known as BPSK. And the bandwidth is also going to be same as uh, uh, that of the ASK signal. So we are going to see the same kind of bandwidth. The advantages are again like many. So we do the, the uh, noise uh, impact is less when compared to the ASK. And uh, complexity of implementation when you compare it to FSK is also very less. And uh, 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 the, that those, the bandwidth is same as that of the ASK we are looking at. So requirement is uh, less when compared to the uh, FSK. So these advantages uh, makes this technique very attractive. And uh, the idea now is to uh, understand how we can uh, use multiple levels, more than uh, one bit to be embedded in, in the data, I mean, in, in the signal. So if I'm using two bits uh, 
for each of the symbol, we will call this as QPSQ or quadrature phase shifting. Quadrature phase shifting. Okay. So let us see how it is uh, been actually done. We will take first the block diagram of it and then proceed with the understanding of its operation. So the block diagram of uh, the phase shifting or QPSK will be like this. So we are having a data right And the first thing that we will do is we are going to convert that into a I bar QC. So we have to convert the serial data into the uh, even and uh, odd signal. So, or we also call that as in phase and quadrature signals, right? So now we are having two data streams here. That will be given to a multiplier. So one signal, the uh, even signal will go to this and the odd data will come. And one common oscillator will be used. Right? So one multiplier is directly connected, whereas the other multiplier is connected through a 90 degree phase shifter. Now these two signals are then added up to generate what is called as a QPSK signal. So we need to add these two signals to generate our final QPSK signal, right? So let's see how it works. Okay, so if I draw the waveforms, okay, so we shall draw the waveforms. We are having bits zero, zero, then, 1, 0, 0, 1, and a 1, 1. The first is I need to take all the uh, in phase I mean, the first uh, value I will take these zeros 1, 0, and 1. So they are odd position. So this is my 0. So I'm taking this first value 0, 1, 0. And one. And we shall do the binary P PPSK for this. So I'm going to use voltage like this. Zero, one, zero, one. Correct. Now we need to do the uh, what is called as the ASK signal, right? So we are going, sorry, we are going to do the BPSK signal. So let's think, uh, let's take that uh, uh, for zero, we are going to get a simple sine wave. If I, if I take this minus V into sine, so this is my sine wave, right? Now I'm having one here, this is my, I'm having a zero. Right? So these are the uh, phase transitions that we are going to see. Right? So I'm having a sine wave. So this is my, uh, what do you call, <coughs> signals that I'm going to generate. Now let us see how, what is happening. Okay, so here I'm having minus. So, okay, so oh, excuse me, I made a mistake here. So this first will start with a minus sign. Right, so that the angle that I'm going to get is uh, 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 the minus 180 degrees, sorry, plus 180 degrees. And here, I should start with 
Oh, please, Anna. Right, so this is one sine wave, second sine. And here, since I'm using, no, so this is one, this is my second. Okay, so there are two cycles I'm using to represent the zero. Now we have one, I'll be taking with a new phase. Right now, again, I'm having a zero. Right? Again, I'm having a one. Right? Now we are having the second bits that we need to take, the, the even position. So we have zero, zero. One and one. So I'll be having zero. Zero and one. Right? So let us see now. For zero, what we are doing is we are adding a 90 degrees phase shift. So if I add a 90 degrees phase shift, I'm going to get, I need to shift it 90 degrees. So I'll be starting from here. So right. And again, I'm having a zero here. I will continue. Just I'm drawing to the scale. Now I have one which need to be again shifted to the 90 degrees. So when I when I bring it here, I will get a waveform like this. Right. So adding these two signals will give me something called as a QPSK. Now when I add these two signals. The phase that I'm going to get for one one, I'm going to get the phase as 45 degrees. Let me, we will see that how I, how I get this 45 degrees. For zero one, the phase that I we are going to get is 135 degrees. For one zero, the phase I'm going to get is minus 45 degrees. And for zero zero, it will be minus 135 degrees. Let us first see how did we get this 45 degrees. How do we are going to get the, the 45 degrees, right? So for this, if I look at the waveforms that what we are having in our previous slide here. So we are having minus of sine omega ct for zero. And in this case, it is plus omega ct. Right. So what we are having in the first case is sine omega ct and minus of sine omega ct. Right. Whereas in the quadrature phase, we are shifting it by 90 degrees. So we are having sine of wherever 1 and 0. So sine of omega ct plus 90 degrees and minus sine of and a CT plus 90 degrees. Now we are working for the bit 1, 1. It means we need to add sine omega CT plus of sine of omega CT plus 90 degrees, right? So if I take this block diagram, I'm seeing a sine wave here. And the other one, which is shifted, shifted by 90 degrees. So shifting of this 90 degrees will give me cos omega city, right? And 
the sum of these two signals can be given using a trigonometric identity square root of 2 sin of omega ct plus pi by 2, which is 45 degrees. Right? So the signals when we add, so we observe that there is a four phases. You can verify for all the remaining three uh, symbols. So we will get this 45, 135, minus 45, and 135. Degrees. And if we plot the relationship between this i and q, right? So we are having 1, 1, right? So then we have here as 0, 1, 1, 0, and 0, 0, right? So we see that this angle we get is, okay, let me, we are having one angle here, right? With its magnitude, which is a 45 degree. And here we are having with 135, this with minus 45, and this symbol at uh, minus 135, right? So that is, we are going to see, oh, sorry, minus 45. So we are having this as plus 45, this at plus 45 degrees, this at minus 45 degrees. Then we have 135 degrees, and uh, this angle will be of minus. This angle will be of minus 135 degrees. Right? So, this kind of diagram where I draw the presence of the symbols on the IQ plane is called as constellation. So if I take a simple, uh, uh, what do you call, what we discussed was the ASK signal, we see that there are two phases, zero degrees and uh, the another one is uh, 180 degrees. So we are going to see only two degrees. And if I use a BPSK signal, uh, we are again going to see two degrees, there's zero and 180 degrees. And uh, so we can call this as uh, they are going to get this one here for zero one. One will be received here for the BPSK signal, right? Okay, so this is uh, 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 what we are to understand about the, the analog uh, to digital conversion techniques, right? So there are many other techniques uh, that are there, but the scope of our syllabus is limited to the understanding of ASK, FSK, and BP and PSK. In ASK is also called as on-off key. And in FSK, we discussed uh, about the BFSK and multi-level FSK is called MFSK, about uh, the coherent and non-coherent FSK. Right? And in BPSK, I mean QPSK. We discussed on binary phase shifting, and uh, the another one we discussed is about the uh, quadrature phase shifting, where uh, more than one bit, two bits are taken to uh, as a symbol. Fine. Okay, so that's the end of this class. Uh, in the next class, uh, we will try to uh, we will discuss on what is called as the bandwidth utilization techniques where we will understand the various multiplexing, demultiplexing, and uh, multiplexing and uh, spread spectrum methods. Okay. So thank you very much. See you in the next class.